Hey guys, Uncle Phil here with the 420 Den. Thank y'all so much. We are live tonight. We have a special guest in the house. This is Russell Langhammer, and uh, he has a good story that he wants to uh, talk to us uh, about tonight. So we can, you know, uh, talk to him and see what uh, he's gone through with with what he's well for what you've gone through, I should say. Right. And uh, and re the reason why he chooses using CBD and THC instead of using painkillers. Um, I know you are here promoting uh, some oil. Would you yeah. like to go ahead and do your promotion? Mm -hmm. Got a really good friend. His name is Zach Miller. He's got a, a CBD company, and he's a Texas boy. CBD is legal here. Uh, I like to dab it. Stuff is awesome. <laughs> I took some to Buenos Aires, and this we is promoted it pretty good. The people were very receptive to it. And uh, I like Zach. I promised him I'd help him out. I'm, honestly, I do. I'm, I'd like y'all to try that. The the, the CBD is great. Well, Texas Remedy RX. Yeah, and I'll put his link below in the description. Okay, and um, here you go, man. Thank you. We do smoke blunts on here. If you want to smoke a pipe on here, we do have some dabs. We also have a blunt, and if you want to smoke a bomb, you're more than welcome for that as well. Uh, here at the 420 Den, we love to smoke, guys. Uh, so tell us about yourself. I mean, you were. You grew up in, uh, you were actually, you were born in Louisville, Kentucky? No, I was born in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. North Carolina. Actually, 12 minutes before uh, we landed, my mother was on the military air charter. My dad came to America in 58, became a citizen in 59, <coughs> went back, met my mom. I'm pure blooded German. First one in my family born here. <laughs> I was born in April of 65 in Fort Bragg, and then went back to Germany, did a lot of. Hey, buddy. Did a lot of moving around. My mom and dad got divorced, and we moved to Papa Rock, Missouri. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I grew up there as Rusty Miller. But uh, Good old Rusty Miller. <laughs> then uh, went to, to Kentucky, became Russell Langhammer. I had to use my real name, went to college, and came to Texas after Kentucky, and been here ever since. Texas, man. You know, once you come here, you stay. Welcome. Man, I'm telling you, well, you know, Sorry, I'm, guys. I'm born in, going to a &M. I'm born and raised here in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, and you know, my my stepfather was military, and so we went to Tennessee, Oklahoma, we went to California, went to Corpus Christi, we traveled all over, and and uh, being, you know, being here in in Texas, I was I've been trying to leave Texas. Can't, man. Can't. Once you're here, you're here, and I'm, you know, born and raised here, but. You know, not all my roots are here, and I, I my stopping ground is here. Oak Cliff, where you're living at. Hey, Oak Cliff. I'm Oak Cliff. in the hood, guys. That's right. I grew up in the hood, and, and uh, you see, I just kind of worked my way out to the countryside. Hey, you know what, though? <laughs> the good thing about Texas is people accept you. Oh, yeah. we're That's one thing about Texas. People here have a lot of, you know, I want to say a better personality because – in California, it's everybody's fast paced. It's just boom, boom, boom. They're I'm trying to, they're though. trying to I'm get into things. Saying. They're trying to acting, seeing, and they're trying to, you know, that's more of the fast paced life. Here, where we live in the South, it's more relaxed. It's our everyday lives, you know, and and uh, need legalization here. Too. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And that's what we're here for, guys. You know, here on the 420 Den, we also like to recreate. And here, what you see is we're here recreating as well as we're doing this interview um, and. His story is is something that y'all really need to hear because this is just another reason why we need to push at least get medical here this next turnaround because a lot of people who are using cannabis as medicine, believe it or not, they're having problems. A lot of people want to get off pills and they can't. And here's a prime example of why. And uh, let's go into this. You were you've been in football for for many years since you were pee wee football all the way up into college. Tell us about that experience. Never got hurt. Even busted up my knee, uh, which kept me from going pro. I mean, but I never took pain pills. Hmm. I loved it, man. I mean, you could, I don't know, it's, it, you can beat somebody's ass <laughs> and, and get up and shake their hands the next play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. back then we had to tough it up. It was good. It was good. It was. It was. A, it was a way. My my coach believed in me. It was a way for me to escape a lot of drugs and alcohol. My mom was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. My stepdad was an alcoholic. Yeah, alcoholic. everybody had drugs, man. I mean, we used to smoke. What was it? Acapulco Gold. Mm. Remember that? Red Bud, Nickel Bag. Yeah. I, I mean, hey, I got friends in Popper Buff that are, are going to say, "Hey, Rusty's right." We used to get nickel bags behind cotton bowl. 
we were told it was going to kill our brain cells oh, yeah. and that we were bad people. The whole, the whole stigma, like you can't enjoy Mom. smoking a blunt, smoking weed, you know, um, and do your everyday life. And we're, we're prime examples of that because that's how I grew up. The whole dare, the whole dare was all about, right. you know, your brain cells are going to be dead. You're going to be stupid. You know, you can't, you know, the whole word of getting yeah. high. When you tell somebody, oh, I want to go home and get high tonight, man. They're going to look you going, what? Just it's because, and well, it's because they hear the word high. If you ever thought about it, and that's the stigma. That's the stigma. I want to go home and get baked tonight. You know, but you can't. Day. You can't do that. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing? Um, you know, it's, it's, that's the stigma that we're fighting you. Same example for you. You're fighting the stigma because you're not able to, to, to do this and still be able to have your insurance or not get looked at wrong or somebody's going to start making names about you and stuff like that. And that's what we're trying to fight. Just because we smoke cannabis and because we want to use cannabis, why does the, that stigma, the old lies of stigma has to haunt us? I know somebody's because a big pharma, man. Big pharma's behind all this that's shit. That's right. Yeah. I'm not, I, I mean, the pills that they had me on, did a hell of a lot sorry. worse damage than this could ever do. Um, yeah. You know, I did a video and I had my company name showing in the video, and somebody messaged me and said, You might want to take that video down. You're showing your company name. And I never thought about that in a stigma way of looking at myself going, Wow, should I or should I not? Nope. I came out of the closet telling everybody I'm a, I'm a cannabis activist and never thought it would affect me until I did a video in my, in my company shirt and somebody, and that was just here in the last couple of weeks. And so when you told me your story, I understood where you're coming from because I, I had to question, I had to turn around and take a look at myself and going, well, I'm not going to advertise my business on my, on, on this channel, now, but on my personal Facebook page, I do advertise my business. But everybody knows I'm a cannabis activist, so I'm not hiding. I'm just not promoting it on that channel or on that page. You know I'm pretty sure my family's pretty happy that I'm a cannabis activist. <laughs> and you know, but here in Texas, and like I've and I've stated this in many videos, but I meet a lot of people who are just not knowledgeable of cannabis. They still have that that raw negative stigma. That's why and, we're here, buddy. You know, that's why you're here. So let's hear about you. This is about you today. So we want to know more about you. You're in college football, and how did Tell us about your history of you and, and how you got into the pills. We know you had an accident. Yeah, I was. Um, I came to Texas. I wanted to stay competitive, so mm -hmm. I didn't fly to go. Got caught up in all that, and uh, everybody knows the old hammer, the muscle head, steroids. Never got pain pills, buddy. Uh, powerlifting was wonderful. Okay. Uh, there was no politics if you lifted or you didn't. Yeah. We were some of the first professional uh, powerlifters here in Texas and uh, never used pain pills. I, I never used pain pills. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I couldn't stand it. <clears throat> then uh, when I got hurt, I'd already stopped pain, uh, playing the, the, the bodybuilding games because that's too narcissistic for me, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, that wasn't who I really was. When I got hurt, I, I wanted to start a family. I was married. I had trying for my second child. I was ready. I was ready to be a father and all that other stuff. I, I didn't pay. I didn't take pain pills. Yeah. Hell, I didn't even smoke weed because I was working for American Airlines. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while, I'd go back to Germany and a little bit of hash would find me, but I always had to clean like out my Yeah, I had to get rid of it before yeah. I got home. So, <laughs> never had that problem. When I got hurt, is when everything changed. Yeah. And that's when you started learning. And as y'all don't know, when he saw me, he said, I know you from somewhere. I know you from somewhere. And we were going back and forth and back and forth. And if y'all don't know, I used to be into bodybuilding. And I was a lot bigger guy um, until I became sick and became a diabetic at 38. And at 38, I was still hitting the gym, still trying to, to bulk up more. I hit 292. And um, that was the biggest I've ever gotten. And I didn't. that's when I got really serious into it. But you're right. In behind the gym, there's a lot that goes on. And to get what you want to get, you're going to be juicing up. Yeah, you're going to juice up, which is not the natural way. And, uh, and so when you're in, you know, you're into bodybuilding, and uh, so was I. And I never juiced. I never done anything. 
Uh, I didn't do hardly any of what they thought I did. Yeah. Because, you know, I worked out in Branch, and Mark Hanlon, and when we were getting big, they they started doing a lot of medication, and uh, that was big for me, too, but <clears throat> I kind of backed off. I don't know why, but something told me, if it does enough hammer, it's time to chill. Well, talking, we actually know a lot of people that know each other, and yeah. we realized we actually probably ranged a, a few times oh, and worked yeah. out and probably didn't even know, because we hung around the same group, and probably around the same time. And we're not too far apart in age. I mean, I'm yeah. 53, yeah. and uh, just a couple years older than you. I mean, I, I got to Texas as soon as I could, though. I got here as soon as I could, and I was running with the crazies. And uh, so we realized we knew a lot of people together, and uh, probably bumping each other. Oh, yeah. And so knowing the history that he's got through the bodybuilding and uh, dealing with the pain, dealing with alcohol parents, you know, and we always want to compare alcohol to weed. And weed is so much safer than alcohol. And I think every everybody in our generation, that, that's back when alcohol was like, you know, the biggest thing. And alcohol was major. I it wasn't it wasn't looked at like it is well, I've seen now. Alcohol in a lot of people's lives. Right? Yep. I mean, it ruined my, my, I mean, I went to counseling for seven years, and a lot of, a lot of the times when they talk about pain pills, they ask you these weird questions about mental abuse, with alcoholism in your family, and you got to be honest, man. Yeah. yeah. They're, 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 these people nowadays with this opioid crisis, yes. you got to be honest, and they do some weird shit. Yeah, I, told, I was honest, and they were like, well, we think that you're at, at risk for addiction. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck did you give me all that medication? That's right. That's sorry. right. I'm sorry. No, that's no. right. Yeah, we cuss on this channel, man. I'm just, sorry. I get emotional because yeah. they, they told me I when emotional. I first got hurt, they took me to the hospital. They took me to Bader and Grapevine, okay? And the doctor was brand new. Good guy. He says, you're not going to walk again without assistance. Hmm. And I'm like, son of a bitch. I mean, I had a baby on the way. Mm-hmm. What the fuck am I going to do? I couldn't go back to work. They were they were taking my pay. I had to take the medicine. Yeah. I got back up in four months and I went back to work. They're like, wow. They loved that. American love, excuse me, my, my employer loved that. Mm-hmm. They they had doctors that put me on. Can I talk about the medication now? Yeah. They put me on six Dilaudid, four milligram Dilaudid. And if y'all know what Dilaudid is, it's heroin. Yeah, it legal heroin. Legal, legal heroin. heroin. Yeah, and, and I, I'm going to testify to that. I can testify to that to Washington. They put me on six. Okay, the maximum by the American Medical Association. The maximum allowed to any human being is six. They put me on that immediately. To a lot of people. Then my heart started acting up. Oh, volume. Yeah. No, Xanax. So first they put me on Xanax. Okay. I didn't give a shit about nothing. Then, oh, uh, you got to switch up value. I, I, I did stuff. Honestly, I did stuff and I lost friends. I lost people in my life that just completely, they gave up on me. And that's the thing, guys. We're talking doctors are prescribing this. And we're going to backtrack just a little bit. Guys, if y'all have any questions, Candace is behind the scenes. Uh, if y'all have any questions y'all want to like to ask, Go ahead and type them in, and she's going to yell them at, at us. Um, he actually had an accident at work, yeah. and this is where it all started. And his life went downhill because of the fact they put him on so many pills. And I just want him to tell a story of how his life was trembling downhill. And he was doing exactly what the doctor said. And in doing what the exact doing exactly what the doctor said costed him a lot. And so – and then uh, I would like for him to explain to you how he got from taking pills to smoking cannabis, taking CBD oils, taking the oil treatments, so he could get, so he could kick these pills, and uh, let you know where he's at right now. So let's start off. So you, you had an accident at work. Yeah, we had a snowstorm, and you know how people freak out in Texas, right? Uh, had a great crew. Had a, really loved my job. Uh, you had a good job. I mean, working for oh, uh, working for an airport or an airport? the airline. But for working for the airlines, I mean, that yeah. is that that's a great job. That's a not I'm say crazy, but I'm saying that is that's a nest egg in itself, right there. So that's a that's a good job. Speaking other languages, so and, and 
I was in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was looking for UPS. And said, hey, there's a guy that named Hammer that speaks German right now. No one knew me. Yeah, they all knew me as Rusty Miller. Nobody knew I spoke German. I wouldn't want to. So I'm like, hey, I can use this. And I got my education that way. American was like, come on, come on. Hey, I went to work for them, man. I left Louisville, Kentucky, and said, bye. I went to Dallas. I hit the ground running. I'd already won Mr. Uh, an AAU Mr. Kentucky, like a little show. Mm-hmm. And then I got in with the Kentucky crowd. I came to Texas. I was wonderful. But uh, when I got hurt, <coughs> it was November. Uh, rainstorm turned into snow. I fell, broke my back, shattered it. I broke L4, L5, S1. And then uh, they took me to the hospital and they're like, well, Mr. Langhammer, you're possibly going to be paralyzed. And there's pretty much 100% that you're going to need uh, assistance to walk. Dude, uh, I, I've been, you know, college football was pretty hard. Three days, this was the hardest thing I've ever done. Because you had to reteach yourself how to walk. Yeah. And you, you, you lose a lot when you get hit a lot. I mean, I've had a lot of, uh, what do you call it, concussions. And sometimes when I'm talking, like I'll get going, I'll, get, you know, I'll forget what I'm talking about. <clears throat> That's a whole other story. But when I fell in America, it ruined everything, man. I mean, I just. It's all right, man. Take your time. Take your time. But I'm better. I went through a lot of shit. And that's what everybody needs to hear. Everybody needs to hear that. I mean, this is what pills are doing. Alcohol and pills are doing. I mean, when 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 you're taking so many pills and your character changes, you're you're angry, you're you're depressed. This is what the pills are doing. And so I lost everything. Everything. And I know you're not, you're just one of many that have gone through this, you know, and we're having these doctors, we're having these licensed doctors that go to school for 12 to 14 years so they could prescribe pills to us because of big to, to where they're supposed to be making us better, but we're not legally allowed to use a natural substance because of the fact that you can recreate with it, it gives it a stigma. But why are we not allowed to have it as medicine? At least be legal to where it's if we, we don't have Colorado. to sit here and work. Yeah, if but I move why? To Colorado, if I move to any state around Texas, if I move to my wife's country, beloved country of Mexico, yeah, because you have a family there in Mexico, okay, here in Texas, no fumando, okay, so they're not gonna allow it, but they're so not gonna allow it. it, and why are they not gonna allow it? That we don't know, we, we can play guessing games all night long, but. You know, Big Pharma is Greg Abbott that's right. in their pocket. All right? Seriously. Ted Cruz squeaked by because Beto wanted to do I'm seriously, man. Yeah. I don't play politics, bro. I need a new pacemaker, and I've been begging Eddie Bernice Johnson. I've been there. I, Ted Cruz was, oh, I love your story about no opiates. But when he found out he used cannabis, I'm a jerk. Yeah. Sorry, Ted. This well, I mean, if you think about it, if you look at this way, all right, so Texas made CBD oil legal. So right now, That's everybody, what I use first. So right now, everybody is on the CBD oil wagon right now. We're all on this big game. And don't get me wrong, CBD oil is great, but why are we not able to have the whole plant oil? Why can't we have the oil naturally? You, you're, you're just one of many where your life has changed because, because you were doing exactly what they told you to take. Yeah. Prescribed by your doctors. Let's tell them what you were taking. How many pills you were taking? They had me on six Dilaudid, four milligram Dilaudid a day, and that was every four hours in a 24 hour period because the pain was excruciating, man. My, my back was broken and I didn't know what the hell was going on. They just kept pushing more drugs at me and I was listening to them because of the good little soldier that Hammer was. You know, they, they used to call me the Rat Nazi. Okay, I'm the rat Nazi, but I'm a damn good soldier. Yeah, I, I did a damn good job when I did my job. When I when I when I played football, I attacked it. When I when I ran track, I attacked it. I did everything to the top. And when I got on the pills, I couldn't do anything. I lost friends. I lost family. 
I don't even talk to my German family half the time. I'm, my, I'm, I'm really close to my dad. And uh, my brother in Louisville, Kentucky, I'm not close to him. But you know, it sucks. I lost everything because of fucking pills. And, but, and all you were doing is what you were told to do, and yeah. you're trying to not lose your marriage. But, okay. I did. I mean, and you were on, how long were you on for 20 years? Uh, you were on all, all these pills for 20 years. Exactly 20 years and two months. On all these pills. And and they, when, whenever I went to them and told them I wanted it off, the first thing they said was, oh, no hammer. You'll have a heart attack. And honestly, guys, I had five heart attacks this year because I did not have my dronabinol. You know what dronabinol is? No, sir. It, big Pharma. THC. It's the same as this, but I have to pay because I'm in a donut hole. Yay, Medicare. Uh, they want $441 a month. Okay. And this medicine keeps me off pain pills. <laughs> the Trump administration says they don't want people on opiates, right? Hammer's been off opiates since October the 9th, 2017. Fuck Walgreens. Sorry, people. Uh, Dronevinol is medical marijuana. Zach's CBD is medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. Right? Why can't I do regular marijuana? I'm a dabs freak, people. I love dabs. Shout out to Drew. Hey, Drew. I'm coming to Alaska. All right. The dabs is what kept me off all the pain. He said the hammer. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hammer. The dabs and the CBD has kept me, the guy who was a pain pill freak, who lost a really good career. All right. And I went back to work in the, in the industry. I went back to work as a German import export supervisor. Anybody watching this on the iPhone? You're welcome. <laughs> AT&T's based in Dallas, y'all. D.B. Shinker. But I don't do that anymore because I got sick. I got a really bad infection from chewing tobacco. And it attacked my heart. And now, this Tuesday, y'all, I'm getting a new pacemaker. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to put me on Dilaudid, and I'm going to have a choice. But it's fine because they're going to take this thing out yeah. and replace it. This will be my third. They're going to put they always miss. They're going to put a, a, one here, and they're going to put one here. One's going to be <coughs> Adamant, okay? And I know this because my body starts fighting right now. Because of cannabis, I hadn't been on the shit. When I have my heart attack, that's what they do. Boom. They put an IV here for, for uh, what is it, uh, morphine, and then an IV here. And then they look at my chart and go, no, no, no morphine, Dilaudid. And I'm just sitting there trying to calm down, all right? When I come off that shit, it sucks. The CBD? No, I don't have any more shakes. I don't have any more problems. And, and that's why I started using, I started smoking pot. I don't care what you say. I started smoking pot. Now I do dabs because the CBD was a gateway drug for me. That CBD is all natural. It grows in my backyard, okay, if I wanted to. That right there, it made me feel wonderful. My, uh, my son was an epileptic, and they put him on Depakote, Clonopin, and <laughs> some other stuff. I used to have to wake up twice a day and put it in his applesauce at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. No matter where I was at, I had to stop and do Big Pharma and put it in there because if he didn't, he would have an epileptic fit. Mm -hmm. The doctors got him hooked on this shit. If I would have known about CBD, in 2009, when I found when he had his first epileptic fit, seizure, I would have, I would have shoved it down his throat, buddy. I'd, I'd have gotten hold of somebody like Zach, and I said, Zach, I need help. Because my friends now, the bodybuilders and the football players, I hope they're watching this. No, a lot of people use it for, for they, bodybuilding. They, they need to use this instead of taking them freaking oxycodone. I've got a buddy in Kentucky named Dave Ernst. And they won't let him use medical marijuana. Mm. And it pisses me off. But you know what? I got him on <clears> CBD. <throat> I got him on CBD and he's quitting smoking. My buddy Billy Wachal, he uh, shout out in Louisville. He has got my buddy Dave vaping CBD. Mm -hmm. And he's already down like a pack a day. And Dave was three days. Dave had cancer. 
They beat it. CBD is going to help, Dave. I've been up there. I tell you, it works. And I I have a story. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have a story. I talk too much anyway. You know, and when me and Sid was up in Colorado, I was actually on the RSO oil. And I noticed I was up there. For one, I was drinking a lot more water, which I was was drinking a lot more water because it was drier up there. But I get tested um, like that. I was able to get I was able to get off my pills. I I wasn't getting any indigestion at all. I come back down and now we've been back how long have we been back now? Since June. Been yeah. back since June. And I've noticed that just here in the last few weeks that uh, I'm getting more indigestion like I was before I went up there. I've noticed I'm getting a little bit more waste since I've been back. CBD. And uh, but I, I I stopped taking my C B D oil and my exceptional. I noticed that I'm take I'm taking pills again to lower my blood sugar. I was up there. I didn't take pills for two months straight. I want to hear because about I was on. I want to hear about Rick Simpson. Dude, it's awesome. I love it. I love it. It's can good I, can, stuff. Can I make that? You can make it. Well, yeah. There's I, so many videos that show you how it's easy to make. It tastes like shit. But all you need is a little so straight on. Anybody done straight on? You have yeah. to find the right strain. If you find the right strain, if you can get your hands on the right strain yeah. and buy. Enough of you can make your own oil to last you about two, three months. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Nectar Collectors. Uh, I've gotten a hell of a lot of good uh, yeah. dabs. When I do my dabs, mm-hmm. I get a hell of a lot of ash oil, reclaim, whatever y'all call it. And like I said, so grandpa's learning. The best way, I'm learning too, man. The best the best way to learn is just to just like talk to everybody. You're going to get a lot of yeah. experience just by talking to other people, watching other people's videos, uh, watching other people's shows. If they're, if they're you know, uh, canvas related and they do their own shows they'll teach you just by watching uh the best is interacting oh man you know when i, and, and I didn't even know about that until last year and then I didn't know about when it. i got into dads that's when i got into the whole medical part of it and then i started hearing about the rick simpson and i started researching rick simpson i just started tumbling on a, a bunch of other videos you mind if I do a dad no 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 uh you want to dab a tac or cbd both oh yeah all right well guys you want to join us? Y'all, let's go ahead and pull y'all's diabrics out, pull y'all's joints out, y'all's blunts. We're going to do right. something that I love to do at least twice a day. I get up in the morning and I can't walk. I get up, I go straight to the CBD, then I go to the dabs, put it on my mat, put it in my rig, hit the fire, hit it. I can deal with any pain, I can deal with any bullshit. My wife. Well, she could. No, I'm not supposed to talk about my wife. Yeah, because <laughs> she'll agree. She'll agree. This right here, people, is better than Dilaudid. This right here is better than Value. This right here is Mother Nature. Thank you. This is all natural. Now, granted, he is smoking it. This now we no, y'all understand. We're talking to people that don't know anything about it. If you don't know anything about dads, if you don't know anything about the medical part or anything. This is for people who don't know. There's a lot of y'all that are very knowledgeable that follow us, and I appreciate y'all throwing y'all's comments at us. But this is for people who don't know that he's using this instead of popping pills. And that's what we're trying to explain to everybody. Is he's able to smoke this, he's not harming his body. You're actually helping your body uh, because you're, in a sense, vaping it, you're dagging it. So you're getting a lot of getting, the, you're you're getting a lot of the cannabinoids that you're getting into your body, and you are medicating yourself by smoking it. Now, and we will say this: this stuff right here, you're able to, to melt this down. You can put it in coffee. You can put it in your coffee. Um, you can put it in for making brownies. You know, it's excellent for brownies. And if yes. anybody has, uh, if anybody has uh, inflammation really bad, yes. And I know a lot of people that have fibromyalgia. Yes. This stuff, it's instant. Yes. I used to, they used to give me naproxen, naproxen or whatever that shit's called. Yeah, naproxen. Oh, and I used to take that. Oh, it fucks your stomach yeah, up. that tears your stomach up. Yeah. Not only that, it's bad for your heart. And now I can't do it. Really? Thank you, Mother Really? Nature. You got to say that right now. It, what do you mean bad for your heart? It's bad for your heart, buddy. You know how long I've been taking that? Be careful. Thank you. You know why it's bad for your heart? For real. Well, the way, because it, it has, it's, it's the aspirin in it. See, I'll do it no more though, and that's 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 the same thing like you. I people didn't hear that. Though, see, man. taking the oil, that's the one thing I'm gonna tell you. It it changed me from taking uh, antacid pills. Oh, 
Dude, I used to take the one-day tablet. Yes, I used, I used to take that every single – I did that for 10 years straight. Now – But since I got on the oil, now it does make you – you have to get – your body has to get used to it because I know it was tearing my stomach up at first. I don't want to go away, sorry. No, go ahead. It was tearing my stomach up at first, taking the Rick Simpson oil because I wasn't used to it. But uh, once you get past it, Low your body out. gets used to it, it actually helps your body. And that's what I'm saying. Since I've been back from Colorado, I have not been on any antacid pills at all. But I noticed here lately I've, I've been getting it, and that's because I stopped taking it. I'm leaving that CBD with you in Sydney, okay? Oh, I appreciate it. Thank I'm you, sir. I'm going to leave that CBD Thank with you in Sydney, and I, I, I apologize. I ran out of the house because I had 20 sucks. I ran out of the house without bringing the bomb, but my wife, when we were in Buenos Aires, we did a lot of walking. You know, She loves to walk, and we did a lot of shopping around our shops. It's a really neat city, and uh, my back started going nuts one day, and I'm like, shit. I didn't have no dabs, and I had I had the the CBD, and I had it in my vape, and I had some of that. And I went back to the room. And she's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Did you put that on my back?" And she put it on my back. And five minutes later, well, see, and that's I'm, I'm getting in the back. See, of the I'm we're on the same walk. page. I was talking to you uh, Eric the other day, and I, I think you were on there. We were talking on there, but uh, I was telling you that we're looking at wanting to open up our own little hippie shop, which is so we can help people in that same situation. Yeah. You know, it's going to you're help able, a lot. A lot of people don't understand. You can put this in anything. You can, whether it's whether you're using the THC version or you're using the CBD version, it doesn't matter. But it's been you're, tested too. Yes, yeah, it's been tested. That's the whole deal. If they want to give you shit, it's been tested. People. Yeah, they pay the extra money to get it tested. If y'all are interested in this, shout out to Peter Rico. Yeah, if y'all are interested in this, this is uh, Zach Miller. Okay, okay. what's a Texas Remedy RX? Uh, yes, him and his brother Josh Miller. They're they're kick ass people. Yes, they're good people. If y'all are interested, the prices are very well. Oh and yeah, it's gonna, the same as the regular dab. If you want to buy a gram of that, it's forty. It's forty bucks. Yes, I, I'm forty dollars. Almost positive, but uh, they. I'm gonna give you some some love here, Zach. They just found a church in Plano mm -hmm. that's giving it to their members. Okay. They know about hearing this, right? They, they know hearing it. this. Here in Texas, guys. Y'all can look this up on his on his Texas Remedy R. Yes. They know they're giving it to people that want to quit gambling. I'm not lying. I don't know what that's for, but obsessive compulsive disorder. Hey. People, people that tell fairy tales, and believe me, when I was on pain pills, brother, I talked about shit I didn't even know the fuck I was talking about. Seriously, you're an idiot when you're on them pain pills. And honestly, I've done a lot of crazy shit in my life. You know, and, that's, and let's just not talk, just talk about pain pills. We're also talking about people who are addicted to alcohol, people. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people that can't live their everyday life without a beer in their hand or going home and making a fat drink or <laughs> on the weekends getting blitz stupid yeah. in front of their own grandkids or kids or and it's just it's people who and you know like, well what about you? You're smoking, but I'm not harming my body though. When I'm doing you know, we're not harming your when body at all. Dads, you know, if you're getting drunk, you're tearing up your liver, you're yeah. I mean, you're tearing up your your you're gonna stomach. Kill somebody too. Yeah, and you, and alcohol makes everybody angry. I know. I've been to the October for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, try, 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 that's so the thing, though. We're not talking about people who casually drink. No. Okay, we're talking about people who drink uh, compulsively that that has destroyed their lives, destroyed their marriage. You know, who are people who are hiding bottles in cabinets because they're afraid of what they're doing? We're talking about that kind of lifestyle. No, just people who are popping right. pills on a daily who's lost their lives. They're living in the gutter. I know I have a brother who live who lives in Austin under a bridge. He's a drunk. He's an he's an he's an alcoholic. He's a druggie. I live in you Oakland, can't help I him. see that every day. I have oh, a family member. Up to those and so I got C B D man. Yeah. I even told him like dude don't you just want to smoke a joint, just be chill. Yeah. I mean, you know <clears throat> you know why I live in Oakland, don't you? No, I don't. Because I I was bankrupt because of my medical bills. Dude, my first pacemaker went bad after three years and tons of medication. I was getting ready to go to a wedding with Gunther and the wire popped in my, 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 my chest. <laughs> Shocked me. I went to my doctor. I'm like, hey, man, I put band-aids on it. My, my friend Mary, Mary Mary, she's a nurse. Uh, she works in Methodist Hospital. She's great. Love her to death. She, I said, Mary, come over. She's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know. She's taking pictures with her phone. And she's sending it to the hospital. And they're like, she's like, Hammer, I think you need to get something on that. So I, put, <laughs> I, put, I, I got this on, on Facebook, too. I, I, I put the 
Band-Aid on it. We went to the wedding because my buddy wanted us to. And then I went to the hospital and they immediately said, you're not going anywhere. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm like, you're staying. And Celsa's like, I think, I think you better stay. They're like, you're not leaving. So that night they put me on Xanax. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning and Celsa was there and they took it out, got pictures. Nine days later, they put this one in. They said, you're going to be a millionaire. I said, why? And they said, you, you get three times your medical bills. My medical bills were $685,000 at Harris Methodist, Fort Worth. Love you. Um, Dr. Eisen and Dr. Takata took care of me. Now I'm broke, man. I can't live in South Lake anymore. So I moved to South Lake. I mean, I moved from South Lake. I moved to Oak Cliff. Do you think that... Oak Cliff. I do you, love Oak Cliff. Do you think that your heart issue has to do with all the pain pain pills you were taking for twenty years? Yeah, it wasn't there. It wasn't steroids. I honestly, I mean, yeah, yeah I understand where we're coming from on that point. I mean, that's my that's my story, bro. The, the pain he's been taking painkillers and pain pills and everything that you that you've had wrong with your spine. It started with your spine. You, yeah, they put you on pain pills because now, of your spine. And then now you've got your addiction because of it. You've you've lost your life. Yeah. You, you you know you've lost everything, and now your health is going downhill. Your heart was damaged because of all those pills that you were taking for 20 years, and now you're trying to get off of it and go to what's natural. They're yeah. not out. They're not. They're giving you the. They're giving you a bad name. They've given you a bad name. Well, and, I made myself. I made my bed, man. I mean, when yeah. I got hurt, I I knew deep down. This shit's not gonna be, be good for me, but I'm in pain, dude. Yeah, I'm in pain. What the fuck? I mean, my wife. Wait, my see? wife. My wife is the one who really, who, who said it best. She's like, yeah, that wasn't hammer. She's that's not the hammer I fell in love with. All right, the hammer I fell in love with is you now. Yeah, because she was there. She knew me before I got there. Yeah, up, you know, and she she. But as when I met her, we were best friends for four years, and. Uh, I, because of her, I'm still alive. But because of that, I'm still alive too. And I'm not that's talking about right. my life anymore. I promise you. Yeah. And that's and that's that's good. I mean, hearing the truth, seeing the truth. This is it. this is I a guy it. that has gone through it. And, you know, and she was there for me. That's why I was just having a shout out. Sorry, honey. Go see it on the last. That's right. right. But you know, my you family, were there. You were there. My family was there too. Yeah. Like, my my Hispanic family are awesome. I, I, I'm so proud that I can speak Spanish. I'm so proud that I got a family that stuck by me because they came to see me in the hospital when I had this. When and when I got off all the pain pills, it, it put me in the hospital. Yeah. I was in Methodist for almost nine days. And when I got out, the first thing I wanted was a pain pill. Mm. And you know what they put me on? Tramadol. 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 I told my wife, what in the I couldn't even pee on this stuff, man. I'm sorry, but I can't. I quit. I told her I can't do this. You know, and and when I made my last video, uh, the one I made for PTSD about people who take pills and they put you on pills because of other pills. Oh, they put me on and crazy pills. And that, your family is affected by yeah. it. Yeah, and my family I mean, stuck. I like understand. I mean, your 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 whole attitude, your whole attitude changes. Your whole personality changes. You're not. You're two different people. And that's like I use that one song. He goes, I'm trying, my body and my mind is trying to be two different people because you're you're jacked up in the head because of the pills they put you on. And then this is what they're telling you to do. And then when you fuck up, what do they say? Let's kick them to the curb. You're ashamed of yourself. Yeah, you're, you're ashamed of yourself. Oh, look at you. You're addicted to your pills. No, because you're you're doing what you're told to do. And then you're, oh, no, but your mind is not strong enough. But people don't see that. When you're down, people are going to take a bite of you, man. Every time you fall, people are going to kick you. I, I, I've told some really, really good friends now that my head's straight. You're not good friends. That's right. You know what I mean? Uh, you were there when I was doing Because your mind is not thinking about well, they that. Were your mind is too, okay? Yeah. They were in the same do They secretly were using the same pills, and they know who the fuck they are. Those people were, were begging me for pills. You know what I mean? And, and oh, hey, guess what, people? You're going to need help. Sorry about that, guys. You're going to need help. You're yeah, going to need help to get off the shit. I'm, I'm, I've seen my friends... I've lost people that killed, killed herself. Uh, they were messed up and they had car accidents and then they killed herself because they, they were paraplegics. I've lost a lot of friends at bodybuilding because of steroids. Honestly, I can help them now because I was a bodybuilder. I was and that's the thing that we're, you know, 
people don't understand being in a, even in an illegal or even in a legal state it's still even military people cannot get the the government to say okay can we be prescribed you know cannabis because even in a, a legal state yeah you can probably go get it recreationally but you know if you're still trying to keep your insurance you're not able to so still even though it's still medically legal it's still illegal federally and there's a lot of people oh, wow. like like you know i know a lot of people it's who are fighting you, it's legal if you get marinol or there's a new one Their called, version. i'm sorry there's a, there's a new one called epidiolex it's thirty five thousand three hundred and something dollars a year people and that that's their version yeah that's their stuff but it but works right let's just make it legal so we can just grow our own and medicare ourselves. but no we're not able to do that yeah. we don't want that we don't want him see our cannabis to be federally legal because we're dope heads because we don't know what we're talking yeah, about oh and big pharma because that's the stigma that's the yeah. stigma we're fighting and that's what we're trying to say is this whole stigma about oh you can't sit here and smoke and medicate yourself at the same time take care of pain take care of depression Take care of uh, even if you're fatigued. Maybe you need a good night's rest. Honestly, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this too. It it nausea. I I have smoked it for makes nausea. You happy, hungry, and horny. Oh, yeah. But more, But it makes you happy. It makes yeah. you horny for life, man. It may. I, I have a lust for life that you wouldn't believe now. I mean, okay, we're, gonna we're, we're, we're gonna say this. People who <laughs> smoke on a regular. I can tell you this much. I know. Like, I'll go a couple of days without smoking. You know, there's times where I'm just like, I just want a quick break. But I enjoy just having that, that come home, smoke a joint, sit back, not get stoned off my ass, not get baked, but just smoke a joint, sit back, relax. And you know what? The stress of running my business or the stress of, are we going to make our bills this week because we've had a slow week, you know, or, you know, the stress of even a relationship. Well, it's stressing your child being sick. That's right. That's Everybody right. Sick, you know, if, you've got a, oh if, you've got a, if you have a handicapped child that you have to deal with on a regular basis, sometimes you just want to just relax without popping a medicine. Oh, well, let me go to my doctor. Hey, doc, man, I'm just, I'm real antsy right now. I'm just like, oh, well, here, let's take, let's give you these. It's, we think you got a mild depression. Have you met Christy? <clears throat> have you met Christy Zuckerman? No. Her, she has a daughter that, that is, is disabled really bad, and she uses a bait machine yeah. and she, she made a video uh the daughter's really really in bad shape i mean it, it makes me want to cry when i see it but then she puts the mask on her she's calms her down i showed it to my, my wife there's a lot of videos i've people seen like, people, wow. and that's what that's what this channel right here is Christy for is to spread Mark, that news Mark, we have to get that news out your story along with everybody else's they need to know the people who don't know and that's why I say share it. Share it to people that you know that are totally against him. I actually had a friend of mine on my personal Facebook page told me that she was totally against what I, with what I was doing. And we have been I'm friends for friends a long this, time. Yeah. I, we've been friends for a long time. She goes, I don't agree with what you're doing. I don't want to socialize with you. And I'm just sitting there going, wow. Well, I'll say enough. And, I, and I said, that's cool. I understand. I said, I would just please do me a big favor. Do what I did when I first found out about it. Research. I mean, with the first video I saw, I was like, did that kid just stop having tremors because they rolled TAC all on his feet? You know, and I, that was the first video I saw. And this was about, what, three, four years ago? And at that point, I was just only smoking a joint every now and then. And then I started researching more, researching more. And your stories and everybody else's stories that I heard made me want to do this right here. And how'd you get that? You know, you research. Initially, no, how'd you get that weed? Illegally. Thank you. Yeah. I don't like that, people. No, I mean, if I want to, if I want to medicate, I don't want to have to go to a gangster. I'm sorry, I, I speak a couple languages, but I don't speak gangster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't trust them. You no, know, and not only that, it's just and you're right. There should, you know, locking people up for a plan is just it, it's stupid right. enough in you know. itself. But to sit there, you have to go to the links you have to go through to get it. Find the people you need to find that you can trust, and then you're doing it illegally. But just so why? So we can medicate ourselves. So I make oil, and I medicate myself. So you're gonna teach me, you know. Right? Uh, oh yeah, I teach you. Thank you. It ain't that hard. Sorry, <laughs> I got caught in my mouth. I apologize. Yeah. But that's that's what we're pulling. That's what we're pushing for. I uh, I'm gonna always keep saying the stigma. This fucking stigma eats me up. I think about this all the time in trying to educate people because I, I run into people who don't know, and it's like. 
I'm like, man, let me let me help you out just a little bit. Let me tell you what I know. I'm getting kind of tired of that. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, when I got involved in this, at? I talked too much about it. I was yes. I was nuts. I'm loud about it too. Everybody in DFW normal is going to agree with me. They're going to go. We didn't really know who. To think about it. My supply right? houses I go to. I walk in, and that's the first topic we talk about. And it's cool to be known as that. My family knows me as. Me and Sid, we're both known as the weed heads, and it's hey. cool. I like that. You were the hippies, but I, I was really glad to get back from Buenos Aires and, and go to my family's house. And all the time we went over, like, the Cowboys game was going on. It was so good. My family accepts me, and the first thing they were like, "How was the weed?" You know, I'm like, "Well, it was pretty old fashioned, but yeah. you know, I'm glad to be home. I'm glad to see you. It was wonderful because they're so happy that hammer's different." Yeah. Hammer's happy. All right. Yes. And and everybody now is like, me and my wife, well, I'm not going to talk about them. On my trip, I saw people at DFW Airport that knew me before I got hurt and then knew me after I got hurt and then I got strung on pills. And they saw me as, as the old hammer. I saw a good friend of mine named Val who works at the Admirals Club. He gave me a big old hug, man. And it was, I thought the, you know, what? Right. it's great that and I can I don't, I don't want to interrupt you right here. No, and I, the reason why I say this, and, and I hope that y'all that are watching will be touched with what I'm going to say. It affects me knowing that I've got brothers, you've got family members who were strung out on pills, strung out on meth, strung out on coke. And you knew that wasn't the person they were before they got like that. That's not point. And I, mean, I was really bad. Look at how many years that you were strung out on pills. And not, not to bad. say that probably pills didn't probably put you towards something else. You know, I can't remember people. Yeah. And in my short term, I mean, I grew up in Papa Glove, Missouri, and I remember everything we did in Papa Glove. Sorry. Uh, and in Louisville. But you know what? I had people walking up to me in Kroger parking lot. Hammer, what's up, man? And I can't remember them. I can't remember their names. And at first I say, I tell my wife, I don't remember. And I tell my family, I don't remember. And they're like, but then they think it's my heart mm -hmm. because I don't have my blood flows really bad. I yeah. have to work out every day or I, I could die. Uh, I don't remember people. And that, that offends me. It pisses me off. And because people come up to me in the gym, they're like, hey, man, remember me? No, I'm not going to lie anymore. Yeah. I did enough lying when I was on pain pills. Probably don't even know what, what you said or how you knew him or how you met him. Or... No, man. And, 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 and when we were on the flight, the boy serves. A couple of flight attendants were like, "Hey, where's the long hair? Where's the muscle?" I'm, I'm, I'm sick. Well, you still look good. That's what they always say. You still look good. Well, shit, I'm trying to stay alive. Yeah. Uh, they remember the old hammer with the long hair and the earring and the beard, uh, screaming at people on the ramp and this and that, this and that, this and that, losing friends because he was all strung out on pain pills. But he was at work all over the day. They love me because I can make it to work. And that's what my point is. I mean, look, at I think people that did, like his example is he got on pills because he was told to be put on pills. So he did what the doctor said and taking all the pills, turned them into something that he was in, probably started doing, I don't know, I don't want to say if you did any other thing else other than the pills you were told to take or did you? No, do? man. Uh, they do drug test you. Yeah. Are you serious? No, no, I'm they only asking. asking. I'm they, sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, because some I'm people's stories go I'm, south, I'm, and I have to know. No, bro, I'm new at this, and I, I, I appreciate everything you've seen. I appreciate it. Appreciate uh, you coming by. Sorry, I had to get to the cats. No, man. Yeah. Uh, I got to uh, save the locker animals up, man. I got to put them up. I saved the cats. Uh, I agree. But yeah, seriously, what was your question again? Just so I'm you, didn't, you didn't do anything else amongst the drugs that you did. They drug tested me. I couldn't do anything else, but I could drink. Yeah, all yeah. the fucking drink I want. Yeah, you're a monster. People have been to Germany with me, and they're going to yeah. say, "Hammer would drink. He would be a prick." Yeah, Hammer would drink. You were drinking on top of having the pills. pills. You were yeah, yeah. After I broke my back, I, I went to Germany. And see, and that's why I keep bringing it up. How is it you could take prescribed pills from a doctor? Yeah. still carry a licensed gun. Okay, or have there. a concealed yeah. uh, handgun. Okay, and have handgun. be able to drive. Okay, and if That's you want me to get a medical card, I can't have my license to carry a gun. No, That's I'm questioning gun. that. I don't like that. That's a whole other topic, though. But still, bro. So right. I mean, uh, so that's my point. A lot of people who are doing what they were told to do, your your whole life went 
down because of it. Yeah. And so people are losing their lives, losing their marriages, losing their health. But over here, I'm here to prove but it. You can get back on, on your You're horse. doing what you were told to do. And once you walk away from Big Pharma, and once you walk away from the doctors who lied to you, and they get mad. Yeah, and they get pissed. Getting I, had, in trouble. I had yeah. a guy at Baylor that, that was giving me the drug Avidol, you know, and, and but he wanted me to take some Dilaudid. Because yeah. oh, he was course. afraid I was going to, every yeah, time I had a heart yeah. attack. And I'm like, dude, I want off of this shit. And he's like, hey, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable. My, my cardiologist is a wonderful guy. He's like, whatever you want to do, you want to smoke a joint? Go ahead, Russ. Yeah, my hey, kind of doctor, that I'm guy, I, I woke up, I, had, I took Gunther, I took Gunther to Six Flags, May 28, 2009. I was getting ready to go back to work and do me shanker after the infection. I didn't know it attacked my heart yet. I took my, my son, we had a season pass to Six Flags. I was getting ready to take him back to his mother after our visit, and I was going back to work at Shinker the next day. Mm -hmm. I had to do, take care of the iPhones. I'd beaten the, the, the convection. I was back in shape. I was doing great. I was pumping gas and dropped. Whoa. In Bedford, Texas. Whoa. Man. And he was holding my hand. I thought it was from the gas, man. Yeah. I mean, I never sniffed gas, but fuck. You can I, smell it. I was like, I walked in, I paid the guy the money, and, and, I, and he got there, was like, Daddy, what's wrong? I'm like, we're going to go to the hospital. Mm. He started freaking. Yeah. He grabbed my hand. I parked in long term parking. I never forget. I parked my Toyota in long term parking, and I walked up to the HEV, and I passed out. For I called, I called my, my family and I said, I'm going to the hospital. And they're like, why? I'm like, I don't know. Something's wrong. I woke up and Dr. Eisen was in my femoral artery and they had me strapped to a table. And I'm like, what? And, and this is all because of pills, bro. Okay. It attacked my heart too. And I'm looking at him going, and he's speaking German to me. The weirdest thing. I'm in Bedford, Texas, <coughs> and HEV, and he's going, what's the name? I'm like, ich bin der Hammer. Was ist mit dir los? He says, we didn't think that you would understand, but <coughs> your wife said your first language was German. Yeah, 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 it was. It was German. So, but I, just, I still got my English. They were doing a, a cardio echo, not an echocardiogram, a cath lab. They were doing a cath lab and looking at my heart. And he says, how many steroids are you on? I said, I haven't taken them since like 94. He's like, don't lie to me. I said, I'm not lying to you, man. He says, okay, I'm in your heart right now. And I can see him. There's a video up here. Mm -hmm. I'm strapped to a table. And I'm going, wow, what the fuck? I'm alive. Okay. I'm in the hospital. First thing they do, man, is they give you something for pain. Mm -hmm. The first thing, because you're upset. Yeah. And you're in pain. Mm -hmm. They're inside my artery looking at my heart because it's two sizes too big. And they're saying, well, you have dilated cardiomyopathy. They put me on social security disability immediately. And they put a pacemaker in me immediately. No questions asked, Hammer. Mm. I had a good job, man. I had a really good job. I was proud of that. I went to college. But they that. did that. So all the damage that was done to your heart was, was from, the from all, the, all the pills. All the pills. It wasn't from steroids. I can prove it. It's been very well documented, Phil. That's why they're afraid of me now. That's why they're using my picture on porn sites and fuck Russell Langhammer. I'm in this group called the Green Rush with uh, Brinkerhoff and mm -hmm. Sonia. People use my picture and do fake po profiles yeah. and they attack my friends. But mm -hmm. I only know about Facebook. Honestly, I, I think Zuckerberg's a little snot-nosed prick. But if, if I'm going to use Facebook, sorry, Mark. Sorry. Uh, I don't give a fuck, really. My, my, if I live 10 more years, I'll be happy because of my heart. And that's because of the pain pills. But those ten years, I'm going to be just like Phil. And that's, and that's what I was. That's what I was saying. You know, before is, you know, okay, we did what you told us to do. Now our life was ruined by we have an example. This, is, this, this is one example this. right here. And his life was ruined. He lost his marriage, and you know, not only that, now he's paying but the God, price of having your heart. God man. was still there, buddy. Because yeah. I got the boy. I got a wonderful wife. That's right. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. man. I that's got awesome. a great family. And that happened for a reason. Yeah. But you know what? I'm lucky that I can do that. But, a lot but of you're just family, one of many that has gone through the old shoes. Well, I was the one who fell because my wife was my best friend. Yeah. And we were buddies, okay? And when I fell down, instead of taking a bite, 
Yeah, and that and, and that's nice. I tell you what, that's strong. I mean, and that's very strong. My, but my Hispanic there's a lot of people that has been down your road, has lost their lives, but they don't who's, know who's lost their careers, who's lost their marriages, lost their friends, lost their families, been kicked to the curb. And I have family members in the same boat. And but when they're going down that road, they're, they that's the road they chose to go down. You can only be there for so long until you're like, hey man. I can't help you if you can't help yourself. And you feel bad because if they would have never got addicted to pills, like if you didn't ever, right. if you didn't have that opportunity to to have, to be able to go to a medical cannabis or use any other alternative that you choose to use, not just cannabis, guys. Well, now cannabis doesn't do everything. This is not for everybody, no, but, but but still, but still we, look I'll at what the sober pills. Anything. That's right, painkillers or for anxiety. You know, and there's so much more that it can be used for. You're not just smoking it. That should just be a recreational use that you want to do to be able to do it freely. But my son, my son, he's going in the military. He wants to do the Navy, okay? Yeah. They like to vape. They like to smoke. It's they right. like to chew tobacco. Hey, I'm going to do that. It, it makes me kind of – but the fact that he's using the CBD, yeah. hey, they can drink all they want. That's right. All right. That's what pisses me off. They're going to, they're putting their lives on the line. My son's going to be in the Navy. 18 and you can't even drink. And you have to be 21. You have to be 21. But you're going drink. for the military now. That, I don't agree with that. Right. I, and, I, and, and they're not about allowed to use cannabis. My whole life. All. They're not allowed to use cannabis. If I'm going to give up my life, I should be able to drink a beer with my boys. And I agree. You should be able to drink a beer with your yeah. boys. Yeah. See, I'm not against alcohol. I'm not against it. But I'm, I'm not against, against you. It. I'm against it over medication. And I, and I know that. And that's why I'm saying cannabis is not for everybody. If your doctor says you need to take something that's serious, go ahead and do what your doctor says now. But be smart about it. Research. If you could take a natural alternative, okay, and you'd be like, you know what? I don't like that. I don't. I've heard too many bad things about that. I don't want to take that pill. Can I use this as an alternative? And if CBD oil is is, is your alternative, take that route. Take the alternative route, you know, and that should be our choice. But, you know, we push for legalization here. We, we oh. I push for freedom, total freedom, total plant. That's what I shoot for. But I think we should be able to choose any route that we want. That's our body. If we, if some person wants to go out, and I don't agree with doing drugs. I've never done drugs. If that's what you choose to do, if that's what you choose to do, then that's get your own body. But we should be able to choose a natural alternative to help ourselves, to medicate ourselves. And your story, like I said, is just one of many. And I've told Sid, you know, and I was waiting to do this till the following year, but it kind of just teamed up and did it now. I wasn't going to do any interviewing. I was going to throw actually a promo video out there. I am interested in your story. If you have a story and you want to come on board, come here. We can set up here and do an interview with you here. And I want you to present your. Uh, I want you to you know present your story to everybody, and so everybody can hear your story. I mean, more stories, the truth, why it works for you. Uh, like I said, Sid's an example. She loves it. Her she she loves smoking it, and it, it helps her. It keeps her off the pills, and and that's what I shoot for. I <laughs> want people like you guys in my life, and I want people like you guys in my kids' life. Okay, you're a, what we call it is Hispanic. Tu eres un muñeca. You're a little doll, right? Yeah. You're gonna, people are going to remember you, okay? Thank you. Oh, what? I, my, daughter, my daughter Kim's a doll, believe me. She's a Muñeca, right? I, my family is your all's family. Y'all come and have a – next time we have a barbecue or next time we have a cookout or a quinceanera or something, come and see us. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it, it's a reason to come to Old Cliff. All right. Because wow. the, the – Back to my stopping Bishop, ground. Bishop Arts is a really nice place now. Yeah. Tell you, it's great. I love it over there, man. I did a lot of jobs. Speak Spanish at home. I used to, man. I, I used to do a little, a little bit, but Gunther speaks better Spanish yeah. than he does German now. So yeah. I mean, I, you don't use it. You actually lose if you don't use it. That's why I still. Speak I forget. German. I just like, ugh, I, I forget. But if you want to speak Spanish, Bill, come hang out with you for a little while, huh? See, I, because my, I, I'd, I, be like, I'd be like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> English. I, I was, it was kind of neat when we went to Buenos Aires because. Uh, I needed to buy some weed, and everybody said, "Oh, it's legal! It's legal! It's legal!" But it's not legal for tourists. Yeah. So I'm, and I'm wearing this shirt, right? 
<laughs> Sorry, Tom Berman, but this is the last Texas uh, free the week. Texas By the shirt. way, Tom Berman just showed up in chat. He's not saying anything, but I see. <laughs> By the way, I need some more shirts. Hey, Tom, how are you doing, man? I've been following what's going on. Are you in the hospital? Is he out? I know. Another thing, I'm gonna start you up. Well, Tom. He's not saying anything, but he's, right. but I, he's watching. I, I needed to buy weed, and and uh, this guy is like. Mira, yo tengo un gringo aquí. He's like, I got this white boy here. I got this gringo. And I'm like, uh-uh. uh uh-uh. He's like, what? I'm like, yo hablo español. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm like, uh-huh, bendejo. Yo hablo bien español. So we just walked out. I mean, I didn't do his business with him. We, we met some homeless kids. And, and what we thought were homeless kids, but actually they had college degrees. The girl was a, uh, a juggler in the circus. And the, the guy... Was from Santiago, Chile. They were together. They were a couple. They were cute as like y'all. And then he made stuff. I bought a pipe from him, and it cost me twenty four bucks. And I got me some local medicine down there. And I just chilled. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I chilled out. And you know what? It was like a second honeymoon. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what. It was because of cannabis. I didn't have to take a pain pill. Eleven hour flight. Wow. I, I called my friends at Trippy Treats. And I got me some uh, edibles. Shout out. And Trippy Treats is it. They're great. <laughs> and uh, I got me some edibles. And one of my friends gave me a vape. And I put, I went to the CBD store and I got Zach's CBD shit all over it. I put Zach's stuff all over the edibles. And I took the vape thing and put the, the smoke shop that I get the, my vape stuff from. Mm-hmm. The dog smelled me three times. No wow. problem. I'm good. I ran into Buenos awesome. Aires. All I had to do was buy some local medicine, and I was good. That's but awesome. I had a wonderful, a wonderful trip because of cannabis. Because I, I, I've been known to when I want something, I turn into a real prick. <laughs> and and when I found my cannabis, I really did calm down. In the same way, I get really. I was in so much pain, though, Sid. I yeah. Mean, I, one day I had to use the CBD a little bad. Yeah. I mean, Zach's stuff's really good, and I had to put it on my back. It's like, I mean, the pain was just killing mm-hmm. me. And I didn't want to run my trip, man. My wife, was, she knew something was up. We yeah. went to San Telmo, and uh, my friend Mernis, the Quino, mm-hmm. I sent her a message. I said, is there going to be any problem finding my medicine? She's like, oh, no, no. We went to El San Telmo. They sell it. They sell it. But you got to grow your own down there. Oh, okay. I couldn't find any dabs, and I couldn't find any CBD. I met a baseball player, an older guy from Cuba, and I, we took his CBD to to him and man, he he really liked it. So I'm hoping that, that my friend Zach can do some business down there in Buenos Aires because I really want a reason to go back. Yeah. And we want to take friends with us. I mean, I had flight benefits. You know, I've been doing a lot of research on cannabis, uh, the history of cannabis and where it started and everything. And do you know that right now that there are actually people that are going deep into the jungle to find rare strains? That's been around. I posted some really neat. Hey, I'm telling you, the, the, I'm long. telling you, the next ten years, the history of cannabis. We're going to learn more about okay. it, where it's where it's came from, where the strains came from. I mean, I'm doing a lot more. There's well, a lot of videos out there that are knowledgeable. The legal but, I mean, they're right now. They're actually going yeah. further deep into the country, into the into the uh, deep into the country to find rare strains. Kentucky is going to be uh, a big eye opener because at the beginning of the the this country, Kentucky's number one crop was hemp. Yeah, and I got some friends back there from Louisville, and a buddy of mine lives on this road, and it's in the city. But I mean, he's got a big pot farm, and it says <laughs> there's four cameras everywhere, and it says University of Kentucky uh, Medical Marijuana Project, no trespassing. Wow, you know that guy's making some serious. Yeah. Yeah. But you know that's what, that's what we need. That's what we need. We need more research. Guys. We need a lot more research of what we can do as far as the medical value right. behind it. I mean, and not only that, think about it. When it gets, I'm guaranteeing in ten years. Oh, man. in ten years, I think it's going to be where everybody walks in. We can. It's going to be you're buying it natural, and you're going to be able to pick a strain. I've got muscle ache. I've got bad Indica. tension headaches. I've got this. I got that. You're gonna be able to walk in and actually talk to somebody. And I right know that's going on in Colorado. It is. But in Washington. I think in the next ten years we're gonna perfect Portland. it. Portland. I think it's Portland. yeah. Portland, man. I I, I got a, a as far as getting up a schedule one drug. That's what we need. 
We need to get off the schedule. We need to tell the truth. Yeah, I just want to see it more. We need, we need more research. That's, I'm just not getting that. But, you know, when it comes to research, my friend Peter, Rika, he owns a laboratory in Arlington. And uh, he's really smart. The guy has, like, two different engineering degrees. He tests this stuff. He tests the CBD. He tests the marijuana for, for legal people in, in Albuquerque and, and, you know, stuff like that. The, the, the dispensaries, he can tell you how much CBD is in something. He can tell you how much indica or how much sativa or hay hammer that way you were smoking. Uh, Gorilla Glue, right? Gorilla Glue? Yeah. Okay, I learned Blackberry Kush, right? Oh, there's, been, there's so many strengths. Gorilla Glue. If I want to go to sleep, man, uh, the indica, bro, that best with, part. Mixed with the CBD, I, if I don't have nothing, I, I'll use the, the CBD and it saved my life. And it saved me going to Buenos Aires, was my point. And uh, if people don't understand that CBD is, is what really helps helps you heal and the THC helps with pain, mm -hmm. I mean, that's when you start breaking it down and people are going to go, wow, I'm okay. Thank you. Because I know people that have, that have asked me questions and I can't really answer it. That's what I've always said before. I I've can't always answer said, it. And no, you're, you're not. Right. I mean, it's even I can't. There's a lot that I can't answer. And, but what I can say is we all can research together. We can all talk together. We can all present stories together. Yeah. And, and that's what that's, that's, that's what you're here for is to present your story. We're going to cut this, guys. We're going to call it quits. I thank you, everybody. Well, man. Langham, we appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for coming I, on board. I'm hoping, that, in. I'm hoping that everybody remembers me, and I'm hoping that this guy, this, this beautiful woman, is just going to be part of my cannabis family. I want to be a cannabis warrior. Shout out to DFW. We need more help here in Texas, and that's getting the word out, guys. Please, this video right here, if you don't mind, once we get it uploaded, please share this to all of your friends and family. Let everybody know. If you have a story out there, reach out to me. Uh, maybe I can get you over here. We can sit down, uh, get everybody together. We can actually do an interview, and you can present your story because we need everybody's story out there, guys. And so please, hit me up, guys. When you vote, I'm sorry, man. You don't have to do Republican or Democrat. I mean, think about this, okay? You want to get off pills. You've seen if, if it has affected your life, and when you go vote, you think about who you're going to vote for. That's correct. And you think about who's in Big Pharma's pocket, all right? Pete Sessions should have thought about that a long time ago, and Colin Allred is another athlete who cares about stuff like that. He's in the Obama administration, right? I don't like politics, but I like Colin Allred. You know why? Because AIDS for, for, for letting me have my medicine in Texas. And what's the guy, who, uh, the new guy, the Rodriguez, that just let, he introduced legislature for the new house bill that's going to let us grow our own? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. I got to say, Antonio, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm new at this, guys. I saw a lot of changes after last about Tuesday, at the beginning of the month, after, after everybody voted. I saw a lot of hatred, man. I saw a lot of hatred that I, I unfriended a lot of people yeah. because I just can't stand it. There's a lot of people that are not for it, and that's fine. It, that's the stigma is yeah, but what no, they got, it, and, that's, and that's what we're fighting. Keep it yourself, Yeah, man. we're I'm fighting that. I'm a grandfather. I'm a grandfather. The more, the more people born. that come out of the closet, if you're, a, if you're a pothead, you smoke weed, and you're, you, know, you do it and you're behind your closed doors, it's time to come out. Yes. Put all the stuff in cannabis, walk out the door with it, let people know I wear my necklace, you know. Just don't bring us down. Man. Yeah, and and educate, Absolutely. educate. We, there's so much more than just smoking it, but we're here to smoke. And free and the people in jail for that's right. shit. <laughs> that's right. You please free the people in jail. That's correct. I know these guys, they, they, they've got all kinds of little spies. We don't need to be ticketed or jailed for cannabis, yes. guys. Come on, man. We don't need I'm this. not drunk. That's right. I'm not drunk. Yeah. Oh, but you want me to take my pills and drive behind a wheel? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, and carry my gun. Thank you. No problem, man. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank y'all. One love. Join us again later. I'll be doing an interview with Candace with CLCW. Um, let's see. It is now seven. Let's say eight o'clock. All right, eight o'clock. See y'all then, guys. One love. That was bad. Thank you, man.